Hello, you guys. So I found a train book for probably Walker. I'll enjoy reading about this one. I don't know if we've read this one already, Walker, but I thought even if you have, we could just look at the look at the cool pictures of the beautiful trains quick. I'm not sure what kind this one is. We'll have to find out. <clears throat> Here's a beautiful one. Trains made the world a different place. It's an old-fashioned one, isn't it? Before the invention of the train, long journeys took many weeks or months on foot or wagon. Trains changed all that. Oh, here's a beautiful scenery one. Here's our favorite, our steam locomotives. Look at that, going along the beautiful mountains there. Steam locomotives have pulled freight and passenger trains all over the world. The first railroad to link the United States from coast to coast, that means from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, was finished in 1869. It brought the country together in a way that had never been possible before. Ooh, here's a beautiful diesel. Look at that yellow diesel. Oh, that's what's it say about diesels. In the 1950s, that's when Grandma was born. Diesel locomotives began replacing steam locomotives on most railroads in the United States and around the world. Diesels are faster, more powerful, and easier to fuel than steam engines. The diesel engine in a locomotive is very much like the one in a big semi-trailer truck. Diesel oil is burned inside cylinders. The pistons slide back and forth and generate electric power. The electric power turns the drive wheels and the train moves. Oh, here's some electric trains. Good picture of them. Can you see those? Kind of the, the light shining on it. Electric trains don't make their own power the way steam and diesel engines do. Electric trains get electric power from a third rail alongside the track or from a special overhead cable. Electric trains are very quiet. They also don't make smoke or give off bad smelling exhaust gases. For this reason, underground trains or subways and commuter trains, and you guys have all ridden on underground trains, huh? At the airports, the Atlanta airport, huh? And your mom and I rode a subway when we were in New York City. For this reason, underground trains or subways and commuter trains that run in and around cities and their suburbs are usually electric. Oh, here's passenger trains. This is like the train Grandma just rode to go over to Bingham to Binghamton <laughs> to go to Birmingham. Okay, Grandma rode that to Birmingham, Alabama, last week. Passenger trains carry people on shorter long trips. Coaches are the most commonly found cars on all kinds of passenger trains. Long distance trains are either electric or diesel. They even have observation cars so that passengers can enjoy the scenery. Some long distance trains have sleeping cars with beds so that passengers can rest at night. Oh, here's another Amtrak, but this is a high speed train. Look at that, I'm trying to get the glare off it there. See it? It's pretty sleek looking. High speed trains are specially built to travel at speeds of 100 to 300 miles an hour. Bullet trains, high speed, pointed nose electric trains were first put into service in Japan in 1964. Wow, that was a long time ago. New bullet trains can travel 160 miles an hour on special tracks. Oh, this is, this is my favorite picture. What do you think about this train on the mountain? Wouldn't that look like it was exciting to do? To ride that one? Let's read about this one. Mountain trains. Mountain trains are sometimes called rack or cog railroad trains. They carry passengers up and down the sides of steep mountains. Rack railroads have special toothed tracks. 
Under its engine, the locomotive has a cog wheel with gears that fit into the teeth on the track. This allows the train to climb at very steep angles and prevents it from slipping backward down the mountainside. Mountain trains provide a safe way to view the scenery from the top of a mountain. And I, I rode one of these in Pittsburgh. Okay, they have one in Pittsburgh that goes up a very, very steep incline. Very steep hill. Freight trains and freight yards. Oh, this is kind of exciting. Look at all that's going on there. It's a lot going on. Let's see. Freight trains and freight yards. Almost every day of the year, hundreds of freight trains with 60 or 70 and sometimes even as many as 200 cars are on the move across the United States. They are pulled and pushed by several diesel locomotives. Train pulls into the receiving area. Little switcher locomotives separate and sort out the cars. They move the cars around the yard and attach them to other locomotives. Then the newly arranged trains leave for the next stops on their journeys. Okay, so here's about the box cars. Can you see that? I know you know all these kinds of cars. Box cars look like giant shoe boxes on wheels. They have at least one sliding door on each side of the car through which cargo is loaded and unloaded. They carry all kinds of freight, from boxes of televisions and computers to boxes of canned foods and clothing. Any items that need to be protected from rain, snow, or other bad weather. Now, I did not know this one was called the gondola. Do you know that one? Let me get the glare off that. These are gondola cars. Do you know about them, Walker? Somehow I missed them. Missed hearing about gondola cars. Gondolas look like box cars, but they do not have sliding doors on their sides. Some gondolas have roofs. Others are not covered. Some gondolas have ends with hinges or sides that can be raised or lowered for loading and unloading cargo. Other gondolas can be tilted over on their sides by special machines so that the cargo slides out easily. They can carry very heavy loads. Flat cars. Okay. Oh, that's with the mailman. He brings us our packages, huh? Flat cars are open metal or wooden platforms on train wheels. They carry big items such as heavy machinery, boats, and heavy logs. Strong chains hold the cargo securely onto the platform. Sometimes wooden or metal posts line the sides and ends of flat cars for extra support. Hopper cars. You know about these? It's a good picture. Can you see it? Hopper cars. A hopper car looks like a box car that has a big opening in the roof. It carries loose loads such as grain, coal, gravel, or sand. The loads are dumped or poured into the top of the car. The cargo is loaded from chutes attached to the bottom of the hopper car. Hopper cars that carry coal or gravel are open top. Okay, now we've seen these. These are the tank cars. I know you've seen those. You see them there? Tank cars are big steel tanks on wheels. They carry all kinds of liquids, including oil, gasoline, tar, vegetable oil, milk, orange juice, and corn syrup. Some cars have more than one tank. Other cars have heating pipes that prevent heavy liquids, such as tar and oil, from cooling off and sticking to the car. That's kind of cool. Auto rack cars. Let's find out about these kind. I'm not sure I know about these either. Can you see it? Auto rack cars carry automobiles or trucks from the factories where they are made to places around the country where they will be sold. Auto rack cars have two or three levels. A three level auto rack can hold as many as 18 automobiles. It's covered to protect the automobiles from bad weather. 
or from getting scratched. Oh, here's our favorite. What's this? Yeah, that's the caboose. There used to be a caboose car at the end of every freight train. It was like a little house on wheels. It had bunk beds where the conductor and the train crew would sleep, or bunks, I guess. A stove for keeping warm and cooking food, and lockers for storing tools and supplies. A telephone linked the conductor and the caboose to the engineer at the front of the train. The conductor was responsible for checking the freight and making sure the cargo was delivered to the correct destinations. Cam cabooses like steam locomotives are a reminder of past railroading times. Today, computers are responsible for scheduling and running trains. Here's a nice scenic picture. Let's see what this says. Day and night, trains are on the move, carrying people and freight from one place to another. Trains bring fresh produce from farms and manufactured goods from factories to customers. They carry passengers back and forth. They link countries from north and south and east to west. Trains may look different now. They run differently, but trains still bring people together. That's kind of a neat story about trains, huh? We'd love to hear about them, okay? So I hope you enjoyed it, okay? I'll be seeing you soon. Okay, you guys, bye-bye.